Hey, what's up everybody? Josh and Alicia here with TerraDrift, and today we're bringing you a breakdown and a review of the BioLite Camp Stove 2 and the bundle you can get with it. But before we get started, if you want to see more reviews like this one, go ahead and hit subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. Mm -hmm. And be sure to subscribe to us on social, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at TerraDrift, and visit our website, terradrift.com, for even more. Mm -hmm. So, a few weeks ago, we did a Q&A with sustainable outdoor brand BioLite on our blog, TerraDrift.com. If you didn't read it, you totally should. It's all about what the brand is doing to be as sustainable as possible, what's so eco-friendly about their products, and a bit about their part in co-founding Certified Climate Neutral, which is all about helping brands become carbon neutral certified. So if this is the first you're hearing of the company or you didn't know any of that, definitely go check out the post. We'll put a link in the description to make it super easy for you. But anyway, we recently tried out the BioLite Camp Stove 2 bundle. And if you were hoping for a review because you're thinking of getting one, wish granted. We'll break down what's included, how it functions, and why you might want to score one for yourself. Or not. I don't know. Let's find out. Let's start with the BioLite camp stove on its own. It's a smokeless, totally portable stove that runs on biofuel, as in sticks and stuff, which is cool enough, but it also has the ability to turn the heat of your fire into energy, which can be then used to power a light, a cell phone, backup batteries, the list goes on. It generates three watts of power and utilizes a built-in fan to create a sort of vortex for clean burning fires. And the best part is there's no gas canisters required ever. So here's how it works. BioLite's patented core technology captures waste heat from the fire through a heat probe attached to the orange power pack here. Heat is then converted into electricity via a thermoelectric generator. This powers a fan and sends electricity to a USB charging port, and excess power is stored in the internal battery. Cause science! Finally, the internal fan injects air back into the burn chamber here, dramatically improving combustion, and it creates a cleaner, more efficient burn. Pretty cool, huh? Here's what's included with the camp stove too. You got the stove body, an onboard battery with a smart LED dashboard, and a USB powered 100 lumen flex light to illuminate your cooking endeavors. If you want more stuff and cooking versatility, you should definitely get the camp stove two bundle. It comes with all of the above, plus a kettle pot for boiling water. You can even add a French press attachment for coffee making purposes a grill top for, you know, grilling, plus a bag of pellets, which you can use instead of sticks and twigs if you're camping in the desert, or sand dune, or I don't know, floating barge in the middle of the ocean. Seems like a feasible thing that you would need a stove for. Yeah. And for you techie detail-oriented types, here are some fun specs. It boils one liter of water in about four and a half minutes. It has a 2600 milliamp hour battery with four fan speeds. It weighs 33 ounces, just the stove and the battery pack. And the camp stove itself is 8.25 inches tall and five inches wide when you put the battery pack inside the camp stove because they nestle together quite nicely. You just have to fold in the legs, take out the battery pack, stick it right in that guy, and you have a slightly smaller package. It even comes with a stuff sack, and it also fits inside the kettle. The whole thing just fits right in there. Not obviously if you have the French press attachment, because that just sticks up right in the middle there, but this whole thing does fit in the kettle, saving even more space. And the grill, you can take off the removable cover and use it as a tray and or plate, and then, you know, pop it back on to store it when you're done. But I bet you want more than facts and data, right? I mean, you want to know how it performed and what we thought, I assume. I mean, you're here watching, so. Getting a fire started in the stove proved pretty easy. Now, we're not neophytes when it comes to starting fires, but all it took was a few tiny sticks, a little fire starter material like dried grass, and a match, and we had ourselves a fire. Of course, you can use actual store-bought fire starters if you want, but we found that dried grass, fallen pine needles, dried orange peels, 
even dryer lint and cardboard worked pretty well. Now, once there's a flame, wait about 10 seconds and turn the fan on low by pushing the power button twice. Uh, this will pump some oxygen in there, which we all remember from fifth grade science class is essential to building a fire and help get it going as the battery pack starts charging. Once the tiny twigs catch, start adding in slightly larger sticks, just a few at a time, and make sure none of them pop out over the top of the stove body. You wanna make sure they stay down in there. The biggest sticks you probably want to use are some about maybe the size of your thumb. Um, you know, give or take, because your thumbs might be bigger than my thumbs. They're not. Hey. I mean, a little, little bit. Uh, I guess. I, I thumbs guess. differ yeah. in size. Once you've got the bigger sticks in there, it's time to turn up the fan to really get the fire going. Once you've got a little blaze, you can start cooking. If you're boiling water or say sauteing some veggies in a skillet, carefully set your pot or pan on top of the stove body with any handles positioned over the battery pack. Now, you'll have to remove the pot when you want to add more sticks, so make sure you can do that safely and carefully. You know, pot holder, camp towel, that sort of thing. Then. Do your thing. Add sticks a few at a time to keep the fire going. On the other hand, if you're using the grill attachment, carefully place it on top of the stove body and throw your veggies or burgers or whatever you're cooking on top of there. But be careful to use tongs or a stick to open the fuel intake lid when you add more sticks because it's gonna be really hot. Now, once the fire is really going, you can plug in a light or a cell phone or whatever needs charged around camp. Just know that if the fan shuts off, you'll have to probably unplug it as that means your device is draining more power than the battery can spare for both the fan and the device. And the fan's the top priority. I mean, if you actually want to eat dinner, at some point. Once you're all done cooking, the fan will automatically adjust to lower settings as the stove cools. Mm -hmm. But you can still use the USB power as long as the little green bars on the LED dashboard yeah. are lit. And that's pretty much it. Dinner is served, or s'mores, or whatever. As for what we thought of it, right off the bat, we were pretty stoked about the camp stove too. Mm -hmm. I, for one absolutely hate having to constantly run to the store to buy fuel canisters every time I want to go camping. I mean, I know they're not that expensive, but it all adds up. Plus the canisters are kind of difficult to recycle. You have to make sure to vent them, that they're empty. Um, then you have to puncture the canister. Then you have to take it to a special recycling center and it's all just a pain. And they're not that environmentally friendly. Sticks and twigs on the other hand, totally renewable. Also free. I mean, I really like free. However, we had a little bit of trouble getting the stove to be entirely smokeless, mm -hmm. especially the first time we used it. It was pretty smoky when we first got the fire started and would smoke some more if it burned too low or if we added too much fuel at once. That said, it smoked less and less with every subsequent use which implies that there is a bit of a learning curve. And after we use it a couple more times, we should have it down to a totally smokeless science. So we've used it about a half a dozen times now, and it only smokes sporadically. And mostly when we're not paying attention to when the fire needs stoked or when the fan needs to be adjusted up or down. So that's on us, I guess. I will also say that the fan is a little tricky to get on the right setting at first. The first time we used it, we couldn't get a handle on how high or low we needed to set the fan. We finagled with it to see if we needed to turn the fan up or down to reduce smoking or encourage a bigger blaze, and weren't sure where exactly to set it when we accidentally let the fire get a little too low. But we worked it all out with a little trial and error and had little to no trouble the next few times we used it. As for the kettle, mm -hmm. it works great for both boiling water and making French press coffee with the add-on. It does take a little longer to boil water than it does on our MSR Pocket Rocket backpacking stove and probably a little longer than it would on a portable gas camping stovetop. But this is cooking with fire here, not refined fuel with adjustable knobs and dials. So what do you expect? Hmm. Speaking of cooking with fire, uh, like roasting a veggie dog or burger over an open flame, using the grill attachment is going to offer uneven results. I feel like this shouldn't have to be said. Just keep an eye on whatever you're cooking to make sure it doesn't burn. I personally am very bad at that, I will say. I burned many veggie dogs mm, mm. And, and veggie kebabs. 
Wow, I, uh, I really burned those. <laughs> However, it did cook things quickly. We grilled homemade veggie burger patties. You could fit about four on top of the grill. We did kebabs, even chili that we heated up in a pot over the stove. The grill attachment is surprisingly stable on mm -hmm. top of the stove, as was the kettle, which fits snugly on top of the stove body. And our crappy Goodwill camping pot did just fine, which is great because it's nice to have a stove that works with pots and pans that BioLite didn't manufacture. Mm -hmm. That said, we did have one gripe with the grill attachment, the pair of legs, which understandably bend out away from the body to provide extra stabilization, mm -hmm. but they just kind of stuck out a little bit too far. This wouldn't necessarily be a problem, but since they're just silver metal, Sometimes they're hard to see. While using the stove, we inadvertently kicked the legs multiple times while cooking or moving around to grab ingredients. Never hard enough to topple anything, but if you're not careful, that could be a distinct possibility. We'd love to see future iterations if the stove include some kind of bright or reflective material on the legs to make them a little more visible. Although, in all honesty, we could easily get some day glow yellow paint or tape and take care of that ourselves if it continues to be a problem. I might do that, actually. Overall, we dig this stove. Uh, we love that it runs on free, renewable natural resources that we can not only cook in a pot or kettle on top of it, but grill with it as well, which we've never been able to do because we've never had a portable grill. And we love that BioLite as a brand is not only super sustainable, but also certified climate neutral. And we love that their mission is to bring energy everywhere, um, including to remote villages uh, around the world with little to no access to electricity or clean cooking methods. So, I mean, basically it's, it's a brand you could totally get behind. I think that we can say that the BioLite Camp Stove 2 bundle is a win. Free fuel, the ability to grill, clean burning fires, the power to charge our devices, and portability. Yes, please. In light of all these wins, the issues we had with finding a perfect smokeless operating point and the troublesome legs are pretty minor. And it's definitely a stove that will see a lot of use on camping trips this summer. Not backpacking trips, obviously. It's a bit too big and heavy for that, but you know, everything else. Hmm. That about wraps it up. Do you have any questions we didn't address? Have you used the BioLite camp stove or any other of BioLite's products? What do you think of them? Share your opinions and or questions in the comments below because we love a good chat. And as always, we'll put a link to the stove and accessories in the description below so you can check them out for yourselves. Thanks for watching everybody. Wander on.